Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Nope. New movie written and directed by Jordan Peele came out earlier this year. Recently just hit streaming over on Peacock, I believe was the streaming network. Uh, this is the third film that's been written and directed by Jordan Peele. There's Get Out and the most recent Us. Uh, this one starring as Get Out, Daniel Kaluuya and also Kiki Palmer. Uh, you know, this is a movie that I was definitely looking forward to. I'm a huge fan of what Jordan Peele's been doing in the film sphere, the universe of movies. I love Get Out, I believe. Uh, still, after watching this movie, I believe Get Out's his best film. Uh, oh, you know, you could call it a masterpiece. It is, it is a perfect movie. Us, I did enjoy, not quite as much as Get Out, but I did enjoy it a little bit. To there's there's aspects of us that left me having to work things out in my brain a bit more, uh, but still you know still I enjoy it. It doesn't you know doesn't have the polish I would say that Get Out does. But also Get Out was a script that he was working on for a long time, and that seems to happen a lot. Whether it's people who write movies or even stand up comedians or even bands. You know, the first piece of work they put out, generally, they've been working on and refining for the majority of their life, for a big chunk for many years. So, uh, generally, the follow-ups tend to be turned around a little bit faster and maybe don't get the same amount of time to let them bake, uh, to, you know, polish off the edges, really refine the work. Uh, and maybe that's the reason. Who knows? Uh, but t to talk about Nope... In his in his oeuvre of films uh, is still great. Probably, you know, while watching it, there's aspects of this movie that uh, definitely I feel like could have been handled in a way that would make them work better in the film. Uh, there are aspects of this movie that feel almost like they were there were pieces that helped them blend with the rest of the story better. Uh, that may have been cut out. Like, it feels like there may be a director's cut of this film somewhere that would kind of help merge the different the different kind of stories, different stories that are happening in this movie a little bit better uh, and and help flesh out the, the entire kind of uh, theme, all of the themes of this movie a little bit more. But regardless of that... I still really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I would say this is more of a fun movie where Us was more of a thinker. Uh, definitely a movie that needed to marinate and to think about the the uh, you know the interesting story and the, the interesting way that story was told. But this one, top to bottom, I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it looked gorgeous. The effects were amazing. The creature design was amazing. Uh, you know, the end, f it was, it felt good at the end. I enjoyed the ending of this film, right? It, it, it sat, it's, it has a satisfying ending, I would say. So all of those aspects being said, I did enjoy this movie, not his, my favorite of his films. And I wouldn't say it's, you know, I've heard Jordan Peele be compared on some levels to M. Night Shyamalan. Right, M. Night Shyamalan, The Sixth Sense, not his first film, but definitely the first M. Night Shyamalan film to hit big. That was a phenomenon. I was working at the movie theaters when Sixth Sense came out, and it tanked at first. Nobody saw it. It was unpopular. It was almost, it was in the smallest theater, about to leave movie, the movie theater altogether. And by word of mouth, it caught. It caught. It, the rubber hit the road. People started talking about it, and it went from... The smallest movie theater in the 16-screen theater I worked at to the largest theater and selling out every show. Uh, something that I had never seen any movie do. A movie that just tanked, just was on the fast track to leaving the theater, and then all of a sudden it struck, it struck a fire with people and then blew up. And then subsequently, M. Night Shyamalan films after The Sixth Sense 
kind of didn't have that same gusto. Not to, not to say that I don't enjoy a large amount of M. Night Shyamalan's films. I did do a top five M. Night Shyamalan films uh, a few months ago. But the consistency of his films is definitely... He has also some of the worst movies I've ever seen. And it definitely feels like after The Sixth Sense that the quality of movies kind of waned and a lot of people speculate that that is to his popularity his popularity his ego may have gotten to him he does he's just surrounded by yes men he's not really surrounded by people that that question his decisions that might be not the greatest direction to take a film uh and i've heard people compare that to potentially what's happening with jordan peele because us and this movie nope in a lot of people's opinions, didn't rise to the level of Get Out. Which I agree with, but I don't think these are bad movies. Just as the run M. Night Shyamalan went on with Signs, Unbreakable, even The Village, I love all of those movies, right? It's, it's just, at, at some point, he definitely, Lady in the Water, not the greatest. After Earth, one of the worst movies. Uh, one of the reasons why I firmly have the opinion that Will Smith is one of the most overrated actors. His performance was the the worst performance I've seen in any it was like not a performance. It was like an actor trying to be a still like he he, he would have performed that role better if it if or would have gotten the same kind of emotions and energy if that role had been played by the wax figure of Will Smith, in my opinion. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I hope, I don't think Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele coming from the stand up comedian background, I think that I don't feel like he is of the same mindset as M. Night Shyamalan, right? I'm not worried about M. Night or about Jordan Peele kind of falling off the edge as far as like ego and that sort of thing, but I could be wrong. You never know. I feel like he's a little bit more grounded, but who knows? Who knows? We'll see. Uh, but definitely neither of these films are at the level of Get Out. But they've also been turned around pretty quickly. So who knows? Who knows what the culprit is? I still enjoy this movie. Similarly, this movie compared to not only Jordan Peele compared to M. Night Shyamalan, but this movie compared in a lot of ways to Signs, uh, which is a movie that I love. I, you know, in rewatching all of M. Night Shyamalan's movies, I get people not liking M. Night Shyamalan stuff for one reason or the other. You know, they expect the whole twist thing that he does or that he did. I guess it's still in a lot of his movies still became kind of more of a gimmick than anything for him uh, where I don't really feel like Jordan Peele's he has any kind of gimmick necessarily other than doing thought-provoking horror films that relate to cultural things. Like, there are layers to Jordan Peele's films that speak to broader ideas and bigger topics than just monsters and aliens. So I appreciate that. But it's not just, like, that was the my criticism a bit of Us, was that the messaging of Us had was a bigger aspect of it than the nuts and bolts of the storytelling right i felt like the balance wasn't there where get out it felt balanced the storytelling and the messaging were both at an equal level and it worked for, there was a good symbiosis between those two things this movie i feel is kind of the opposite of us where this one the messaging and and the broader ideas it's trying to say aren't necessarily as heavy-handed as the storytelling. So this one being more fun, I would say, in a lot of ways. And, you know, the the themes of this movie, it, it's talking about film, the, the industry of film, the history of film. Also, the idea of using animals and 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 living creatures that aren't 
necessarily participating in film or in entertainment in a willing way and how those things can backfire obviously the famous story of of uh the uh the the uh vegas guys um with their lions i'm blanking on their name all of a sudden roy siegfried and roy right this is a chris rock bit like that 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 lion didn't go go crazy that lion just went or that tiger went tiger right the the fact that they have wild animals as part of their stage performance is not in any way a natural existence for those animals and when they tap into their natural instincts is not uh, a sign of those animals going crazy it is a sign of those animals acting in their pure natural way uh and so this movie in talks about that talks about the nature of film also has ties to just the the origins of film combining still images together in a way to produce the illusion of video of moving images i mean the first film uh which is highly related to this film is a, a black man riding a horse right one of the first examples of moving images a collection of still images that uh show the illusion of a man riding a horse and that in this movie that jockey that man that rode the horse was unknown people only know in the history books of film only know the person that the quote unquote director the person that captured those images they don't know the person who was the the subject of those images which in a lot of ways this movie is dealing with the subjects of moving images and how forgettable and how disposable they are in a lot of ways uh but that jockey specifically is tied to the main characters is the relative of these characters in the fictional sense of this movie and so all of those ideas of film the film industry and what is performance what is spectacle what is what are we doing to uh change natural lives in using natural lives in a way for our entertainment all I, I enjoy all of those messaging but at the heart of this movie it's also spoilers i guess for those i mean this movie's been out for half a year the trailers give away a lot of stuff i thankfully avoided a lot of things didn't try to i you know i prefer to go into movies blind it's the best experience as possible trailers generally spoil way too much of movies these days uh so if you are a person that wants to avoid spoilers and have thus far then this is your warning because i will be talking about this movie but the general premise is that it's an alien ufo movie right so it's and it's an interesting take on the genre, that subgenre of horror movies, the alien UFO movie, which I appreciate that as well. Also, gorgeous film. Shot the night shots are gorgeous. The cinematography in general is gorgeous. Which it would kind of have to be, considering one of the main aspects of this movie is are these characters trying to get the ungettable shot trying to film the thing in a way that has never been filmed before and do it in a way that would put them at the forefront of exposing this thing that everybody knows exists, right? At this point, unidentified flying objects are a thing. Whether it's alien or other governments, nothing would surprise me. Uh, especially, I mean, considering the government's able to declassify information and prove that UFOs exist, uh, you can tell how much chaos is a person's general life for those things not to be, like, constantly talked about on the news, right? <laughs> we have so many other things with climate change and government turnovers and fascism kind of being on the rise in many places around the, the world uh, that 
you know that uh, the idea of ufos existing kind of just just skirts on by nobody's like yeah 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 okay we're trying to not you know cause cat we're trying not to become a post-apocalyptic movie uh since we're living in all of the different genres of movie combined so alien film i love the way that the the idea of this movie right it's got a unique look to the ufo to the alien as it were and it also has a, an interesting idea that instead of the ufo being the vehicle that the aliens come to earth in or on in the idea is that the ufo itself is just one of the forms of this alien being right almost kind of like how a lot like this this creature reminded me a lot of like sea creatures right how they're able to morph and change and look like different things octopuses octopi very much so i would i would would not be surprised if an octopus in, in a lot of ways was the inspiration for the idea of this creature and even how it floats in the it's basically like a water creature but in air how creatures in the water how not only are they able to like morph into different things some creatures obviously but also how effortlessly they kind of glide and float through the ocean so does this creature so does this creature that at times looks like a ufo looks like a disc Right, but then the opening is like the mouth. Way it floats through clouds. I love the way in this movie not only are they able to film and capture the night scenes, which apparently was a revolutionary kind of technique used to film the night scenes where they were filmed during the day and they like overlaid infrared film with some other kind of film in order to produce the the night scenes in a way where you can still see things which i love but they didn't have to light the the entire giant vistas that they are they're shooting so even that aspect is kind of interesting that cinematography is a major theme of this aspect of this movie and in the creation of the movie itself cinematography had pushed boundaries and and explored new techniques and new technologies which i love that as well that kind of aspect that's that's mirrored in not only the production of the film but also uh in the themes of the film as well let's take a little break from the show to promote i figured out a way on my website to offer prints for every single painting so if you go to a painting you can buy the original painting or you can buy a print for everything artwork that you don't want to spend a hundred dollars plus on nine by 12 inch ink painting on paper hundred dollars for the original one-of-a-kind piece of artwork paintings range in price depending on their size the eight by ten print twenty dollars available in the store at inspireddisorder.com and now let's get back to the show but yeah the way and the way it captures this ufo in a way that most most movies don't like it's far more dynamic the way this ufo floats you know the the use of space and and hiding behind clouds and hills and mountains it's just it it gives it a completely new type of a look instead of what you generally see in a lot of ufo movies i guess is just like you know locked off shots maybe some panning but like you know just kind of seeing this this spacecraft fly through the scene in a way where this it's like you know it's it's ominous in a lot of ways and a lot of times it just appears as like a shadow behind the clouds and just effortlessly floats and even at the end of this movie where you see it's during the day and you see it getting close to the ground kicking up dust you can see the skin of the when it looks like a ufo when it looks like a disc the skin of it rippling right like flesh but like a thin like it feels like a kite 
you know like just it, it it's just like this this light airy type of a creature that just feels so like effortlessly floating through air as if you know there's a lot of times you look at sea creatures and just the way they float and their their skins and their tentacles float in in water it kind of has that same type of a feeling but instead of floating in water it's floating in in air so i love that i absolutely love that when it like morphs into its i would say you know how creatures to look dominant they they you know like a uh, uh, praying mantis for instance how they get into a posture that looks make th- makes them look bigger they look spread out they have fans of things they look completely different when they are trying to intimidate a thing and the way this creature does that at the end of this movie really kind of opening itself up and transforming into this this other version of it instead of just being this kind of simplistic disc that's flying around and it opens up into this looks definitely more like a squid or or an octopus but also has that that feeling of what a praying mantis looks like when it's posturing or when a lot of birds look like when they're posturing a lot of animals look like when they're posturing they get big they get spread out they get intimidating so i loved all of that i loved all that aspect when you see inside of it when it's sucking people up and seeing like basically inside of its mouth or whatever hearing people scream as it flies away great i loved all of that stuff and then you have also this story about this Daniel Kaluuya's character and Kiki Palmer are the children of a guy who runs a horse ranch that's for that the horses are used for trains horses for movies films entertainment whatever purpose they're like show horses and he passes away this freak thing where like just change and keys and things fall from a plane specific supposedly and like a a nickel fell into his head and just like killed him right because they're falling at a speed and when it hits you it's it's not a good thing and it's a crazy scene when it starts right they're just out daytime desert and you see like it almost is like uh when hail falls except for it was metallic objects. So he takes over the ranch, and Kiki's kind of the... They definitely have different strategies, different styles. Daniel Kaluuya's character is definitely more quiet, knows how to break the horses, knows how to do the back end of all of the the -the behind-the-scenes work with the business. And Kiki Palmer's character is definitely more of the outgoing salesman, the person that's effortlessly can communicate with the show business people. Um, And there's friction because of that, because they both have different things. They both want the same thing. They both want the business to be successful, obviously. Not only monetarily for their own needs to survive, but also because it's the legacy of their family. It's a business that you know started from the beginning of motion pictures and is one of the most popular you know features in film throughout you know great 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 grandfathers you know this business but also the changing of the industry you look at most movies today are not using live animals anymore and it's very noticeable. I've been watching a lot of Indian films. And in Indian films, obviously, they're using uh, CG animals, as most American-made films are as well. Uh, but they tend, a lot of Indian films will have a disclaimer specifically stating either before the film or even in individual scenes, you'll see a disclaimer that the animals in this scene are, are CG. Like, no animals are being hurt, right? Which would basically put their business out of of work. There's even a movie in the beginning of this film they're about to work on. And the horse, they're not really the people involved with making this film, aren't taking any precautions to of safety when it comes to a, a giant animal uh, on set. And, the you know, they freak the horse out. It kicks and they, they're like, okay, we need to replace this live thing with a 
a CG horse, which is like, you know, I mean, I, w- I would imagine a horse would be a more difficult thing to change considering most horses would be ridden in a movie and I'm sure it would be way easier to just ride a a real horse than it would be to try and simulate a character riding a horse unless you just CG the whole thing which I'm sure would not look good but you have these kids trying to keep this business afloat you also have this neighboring theme park, this like Wild West theme park that's near their ranch that's run by, uh, what's his face, uh, uh, Steve Yoon, who's a former child actor who witnessed uh, a tragedy on set. He worked on a sitcom called, hey, was it George? What was it called? Um, jo- Gordy's Home was the name of the sitcom and that's how this movie starts with the tragedy that happened on the sitcom set using a live chimp where something spooked the chimp and it just killed everybody on set except for steve yoon's character when he was a child right so he's dealing with trauma but he's also running this theme park and has a using live animals as kind of a spectacle as a show Right? He's somebody that never learned that the dangers involved with using live creatures. Right? You, there's an element of the show that you, do ha- you have zero control over and could drastically go the wrong way at any moment. And of course, there's a scene where that's reminded, that aspect is, he's reminded of. But that's the aspect of this movie that I felt like was attached. It it kind of makes sense thematically that it's part of it. But when you see him, there's already a show involving this creature that the other people, that the, the, the ranch, the Haywood ranch, is just trying to capture this image using new technology to, to get the, the shot, the ungettable shot. Somehow, the theme park already has an attraction that involves this alien. That, like, it felt like there was a chunk of this movie that's missing that sets that up. Right? That sets up the fact that he knows before the Hay- the Haywoods that this spaceship is there doesn't know that it's an alien and not a ship and thinks that he can control it right using horses as a means for this show so that was an aspect where you see this show happening and he's you know there's people in the audience you can see the back of his jacket. It's got the the UFO all in, you know. It's got like the cowboy, the 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 show off cowboy jacket with the rhinestones and stuff. But it's a a UFO on his back with the you know the tractor beam under it. So it's like, and his kids are wearing alien outfits. Like it's it's clearly a, a part of the show, but it seemed like it was just I, I missed something, and that's and. And trying to combine that whole Jordy th- story with the main plot of the movie, it just felt like it was missing stuff. Like it doesn't, th- they didn't match. They didn't fit together, right? It felt like there are two puzzle pieces and one of them was banged in place, but you could see gaps. Right? It didn't, f- it's not, it's the wrong piece, right? There's another connective piece that's missing. But as far as the Haywoods and them trying to get the ungettable shot, right? That's their that's their thing, right? We're going to get back on top. We're going to get notoriety. We're going to get famous. We're going to put this we're going to put our business back in the limelight by getting this shot that is definitive. Right? It's like so many people have cameras. Why haven't they been able to get a good shot? So we're going to we're going to get 
the best security cameras. They got the IT guy from Fry's, which I thought was hilarious. You know, Fry's has the UFO crashing into the front as display of their, their building, uh, which the Fry's I was used to in San Diego had similar stuff. Let's take a little break from the show to promote the benefits of Inspire Disorder Plus. So you go inspiredisorder.com slash plus. Sign up. $5 a month. You get to binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free. You get to watch all of the live painting videos I do. You get a special members only discount and deals for all of the artwork and merch that I sell. You also get the complete podcast back catalog of every podcast I've ever produced. Hundreds of episodes countless different podcasts you also get access to my personal blog a new blog comes out every week in addition to that you get my creative writing that i'm releasing you also get access to asking me anything 14 years of experience podcasting i've been creating art my entire life i've been using photoshop since middle school and you can contact me to ask me questions about that or anything else so those are the benefits for signing up for inspired disorder plus and now let's get back to the show it makes sense like in this movie how devices all electronic devices whether they're hardwired in or battery operated die whenever the creature is near it and that's why it's an ungettable shot right your phones don't work when it's close by you know it has to be far away that's why it's only like blurry images far away Right, the idea of this animal and what it causes, and even how they set up these wacky, wild, inflatable people as kind of a detection system of where the UFO's at. When they go down, you know it's close because those electronic things aren't working anymore. You know, they get the cinematographer guy, which that's another aspect of this movie that feels a little cheesy. Like the dude's raspy voice. Is great. Don't get me wrong, but it feels a little, little, little caricaturish. This cinematographer, this grizzled cinematographer, that's in, right? He's like, okay, a challenge to get the ungettable shot, sure, right? Okay, electronic devices don't work. I, I rigged this camera up, this IMAX camera, to be hand cranked, right? He found ways to get this shot, regardless of of the use of power. So all that stuff is great. The fact that his ego took over and he wanted to get the even better shot leading to him being sucked up is like, okay, I guess, I guess, you know, I mean, it makes sense. Sure. So I enjoyed all, all of that stuff. And even the character that comes in kind of in that last act of this movie where they, they have – the plan, they have everything set up, the cinematographer's there, they got the, the tech support guy there, they got, you know, they have their ideas, they know what to do, trying not to, you know, invite this creature to attack them, they know how to, like, you know, avoid attacks on some level. And then this TMZ guy shows up on an electric motorcycle. Which is cool. Doesn't I don't know why. I mean, obviously it's an electric motorcycle because it it's going to be cool when it stops working. But also the idea of that TMZ guy is like, oh, he's coming in. It's just another example of the idea of capturing something, and the people capturing the thing are more important than the th than the thing, right? Like TMZ is they, they want to swoop in and get the story before the Haywoods are able to, right? They're, he's coming in, this anonymous guy, but he's going to be famous if he catches this, this thing, right? Catches this family doing the work, right? The same family that, that rode the horse, right? They're riding the horse, and this guy's coming in last minute, to swoop in and get all the credit for what they did. Kind of interesting. You know, thematically, it works with the themes of the movie. But yeah, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I liked how it ended. When you find out the creature, it looks great. And even the end 
where at the end is another aspect where it like felt kind of like accidentally easier than it should have been right like it didn't feel like this was part of the plan maybe it was part of the plan and i missed that aspect of them pl that planning aspect where she goes into the theme park and releases the inflatable balloon guy right i didn't I don't think that was part of it. it seemed like that was something she improvised as she was just trying to get away. She's like getting away. She ends up in the theme park. She's like, oh, there's that thing. Right. That's going to be able to, to distract it. Whether it was initially planned that way or supposed to be her improvising in the moment, either way, it was like obviously the perfect thing to do. Right. It was the perfect one to punch. Right. On one level, that giant balloon distracted the alien. Right, that kept it from attacking her brother. Right, drew it away, and then also was able to put it in frame for that well camera, which she was able to take individual pictures, very much like her relative was captured in individual pictures that were later put together to prove an idea to prove the idea that moving pictures can exist and in these still pictures that are, you know, you could say, well, they could have been Photoshop. You can easily Photoshop images to look like that. But the way these pictures were printed is like a Polaroid, right? You would have had to do the effects in camera, right? So the fact that, you know, she's cranking these pictures out and they're shooting out and developing like Polaroids do, right? You, you watching them the image kind of show itself on the paper would make those far more valuable as evidence of this creature than any other type of photograph, right? No digital capturing of this thing in can easily digital would be the easiest way to do it, to, to load it into a computer and to fabricate. But the cinematographer using the IMAX, capturing it in film, it would have to have been effect that would have had to happen in camera. But also her cranking those individual photos out works for what would they would need to be proof, right? So, like, in the end, they were successful. And even though it kind of felt easy, right? It's like, oh, she, you know, she ends up at running away from this thing, riding away from this thing on this electric bike, goes into the the uh, theme park where they already set up this well camera already. And she releases the balloon, which does the perfect thing that she needs, not only to destroy the alien, which was kind of great, but also to get the proof that they wanted, the Oprah shot, right? So I don't know. I, I enjoyed that, that it felt like easy. It felt like, okay, right, effortlessly did the best things possible to not only destroy this thing but to get proof of it. But I still enjoyed it. I loved the movie. I, I just wish the Steven Yoon character and that storyline with Gordy had been blended more, right? Because it's still talking about the same things, the dangers of using live animals, as a means of entertainment. Obviously the most tragic version of that. You know more than just getting kicked by a horse. It was this ape eating the faces off of all of his co-stars of this sitcom. And that kind of being his identity. Right the only thing in his past that anybody thinks of. Is that tragedy that he was a part of and survived. And now he in some ways is the attraction but fell victim to the same mistakes that the producers of his show did trying to assume you can control this wild creature in a way for your own benefit and your own profit it just felt like there was something missing that ties that in but tied that in better but Overall, I enjoyed this movie. I'm excited for whatever he does. You know, like I said, the cinematography, the night shots. I usually hate night shots in movies because it's so hard to see stuff. But the way this was filmed, 
it looked gorgeous like you could see the cloud and it didn't look like cg it looked like real clouds in a real sky it, it looked like this spaceship was flying through like there was depth to it flying and hiding behind clouds the scene where it's like raining down blood on the house beautiful you know i really enjoy it's a lot of it's like a movie that has a lot of fun but then also has layers of messaging in it which i appreciate as well and i feel like everything kind of holds together right like i've heard people try and poke holes in the fact that like oh you can doctor the photos you could do this do that but i think if you have the original photos if you have that original 70 millimeter film from the IMAX camera, right, th where those effects would have had to been done in camera to be able to get them on the film, to be able to get those images on those types of pictures, I think it adds to proving what they wanted to prove. So, yeah, I enjoyed the, the, the movie. I really liked it. Um, it's on Peacock. Like I said, uh, but I'm sure everybody's seen it already. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I'm excited. He is definitely one of my favorite directors, writer-directors. Uh, I have faith that he will not turn out like M. Night Shyamalan. Not that M. Night Shyamalan's done some good stuff. He's just inconsistent, right? His last movie, Old, didn't like it. But I loved The Visit. I loved, you know, the... Um, God, what was another? He's, there's some other movies he's done. He's, he's like, he's gone up and down. You know, I don't think he's like the genius we all made him out to be. And I don't know if Jordan Peele is the genius that. But I think he's doing things in a way with in the genre of horror that feels like a almost like a big just like just fresh and new. And I appreciate that. So anyway, check it out. I'm a fan. Nope. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where, where you wake, wake up and you realize, and realize that everything, everything that you've been dreaming about, about everything, everything that you've been, been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.